Good morning, my stamping friends, and welcome back. It's Sandy here. I have a fun and super easy project for you today. Simon Says Stamps had a new product release yesterday called Fresh Bloom, and I'm excited to have a handful of these products to share with you. And this one was my all-time favorite, so we're playing with it first. It's called Pretty Peony Background Stamp. It's a lovely five and a half by five and a half square. I'm not going to, I think I can get it out of here. It's kind of sticky because I have been embossing with it. It's a lovely red rubber, so you're going to get awesome, awesome images with it. And what I did for my card is I heat embossed it with white embossing powder to do my water coloring. And just to speed things up, I did it ahead of time and I also did the sentiment. So my sentiment is thanks for everything. And it's from another stamp set from Simon Says. And this one is called Big Thanks Words. So you've got five larger thanks and then a whole bunch of little guys underneath it here. And I use this one just on the side for everything. This covers pretty much everything. This is a great little set. All right, on to the card. While I love spending hours watercoloring, I know that some don't. And sometimes we don't have time to do that either. So this is a quick solution I came up with for today's card. It looks pretty, doesn't it? And you can tell that it's watercolored. But to save a whole bunch of time, I started with a piece of colored cardstock. And this is Simon Says Stamps cotton candy cardstock and again as I said I embossed it and so what I'm using is my Altenew 36 pan watercolors I have a watercolor brush but you can also use a water brush and just off camera here I have some clean water and so for this card what I did was I used these three pinks here and then a mixture of these two greens but mostly this green so if I zoom in you know what I'm playing with and what I do is I wet this, and this is really pigmented ink, so it's quite dark. So what I've been doing is pulling it up into the lid and blending it out a little bit to dilute it so it's a little bit softer, especially for my background. So that's what I'm doing here, just off camera it seems. Okay, I'm pulling it in a little bit for you. Okay, so let's start with this big flower right here. So I'm going to bring this in and... I need to wet everything so that the colors blend, but I'm also adding a wash at the same time with this light pink. And it's going to dampen my, wa my paper for me and allow me to blend some colors. Now you don't want puddles, otherwise the second color is just going to come in and completely bleed out all over the petal and we don't want that because we're just adding highlights so I'm going to bring in my second color which is this guy here right next door and blend it out a little bit because again very dark add a little bit more water to it and then what I'm doing is I'm just going to bring it in where I want the highlights and it is going to bleed a little bit but that's what we want. And work your way around through each petal. The centers I'm just going to make dark. Where the petals are right underneath a different petal, you're going to add the shadowing. Super easy. And if, if it's not blending, if it's just kind of sitting there, add a little bit of water. So clean your brush. I'm just cleaning it on my paper towel and then come back in with a damp brush and just blend it in a little bit. Or if you get too much in one spot or not enough, like you want a little bit there, you can add. And as this dries, you're going to see some light and dark spots. Uh, but the cool thing about watercoloring is you can always come back and wet it again and add a little bit to it. Okay, so let's do the one right beside it. Again, I'm wetting my paintbrush and I'm going to pick up some of this and I might have too much water. We'll see how it goes when I get it all spread out. And at this point I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you and move this down because you can see how I'm set up. Sorry, hope I didn't make you seasick. Okay, so again I'm adding my wash and then I'm coming back in with a darker color and I'm just dabbing. I've got quite a puddle going on there so I'm, that's why I'm staying away from it for a sec. I want it to dry a bit 
And if you do get something in a spot where you don't want it, just take a little piece of paper towel and you can usually just wick it up, which I'm also going to do with the puddle over here. <laughs> so my paper's still wet. I should be able to, yeah, I can come in and just add a little bit of highlight. See, and that one was wet too, and see how it pulled it all the way up? And you can also add some in on your edges. There we go. Okay, so I am going to stop talking and continue coloring and add some music for you and just speed this up a little bit so that you can see how I work through this. So you may have noticed while I was working on the green leaves that I was staying away from the spots that were still really wet on the flowers because I didn't want them to wick into each other because the color would blend and um, it would become kind of a yucky mess. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm moving over to this third ink here, this one here. It's the darkest and I'm blending it out just a little bit and I'm going to use that for my berries because I want that little pop of color in the background. I like to refer to it as my background noise when I'm building cards and I want the contrast of the nice dark pop of color but just a tiny bit of it but it's also going to tie my mat together into this card because I've got a darker colored mat Okay, so, and this just takes a sec. And then once you're finished with this, you want to make sure this is completely dry before you move on because you don't want to smear it. So, you, you know, you can walk away and go fold some laundry or grab your heat tool and just heat it and dry all of this ink and paint. 
I'm going to have a good look at my flowers in just a sec here and make sure that I don't need to re-blend something. I'm just making sure I got all my little dots. I do. Okay, so if you see something that's really ugly or you don't like it or it blended funny or you want to add a little bit more color, like I could blend this one out a little bit more, you can add some color. And then I just come in with a clean paintbrush that's damp and just kind of blend it together a little bit. So you can muck around with it a little bit if you want to, but remember you're working on cardstock, so if you play with it too long, it is eventually going to pill. It's not quite as forgiving as watercolor paper is. There we go, so I'm going to let this dry so that I can put my card together. Okay, my art piece is dry. One more thing I like to do is rub it with a dry paper towel or a tissue just to make sure that I don't have any paint or ink sitting up on top of my embossing so that it's going to pick up on my fingers and transfer probably somewhere where I don't want it, like on my white card. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my sentiment just in case I didn't cut my vellum just right and I need to trim it. So what I like to do is fold glue dots in half and just attach them behind some of the wider pieces, letters, in my sentiment. The other thing you can do is if you know where you're going to add your uh, elements, your embellishments, you can put glue dots underneath there and then these will cover them. So there's a couple of ways that you can do this. Okay, and I had a piece that didn't quite emboss right there. So what I have decided is <laughs> <laughs> that's where my sentiment's going to go. Just like that. So place it down. And then I do have a tiny overhang here. So what I like to do is come from the back and then that way I can use the edge of the cardstock as my guide just to give this a little trim. So now it's perfect. So then I can add my score tape to the back. I'm using quarter inch score tape. I love this stuff. Uh, it's quite strong. And especially when you've got cardstock that has gotten damp, you'll see that there's a bit of a wow to it. And if you want your cards to be nice and flat and look professional, then you want to make sure that it's glued down nicely. So you're just going to do this and then peel off the backing. Okay, I've got my backing all peeled off. Hard for me. <laughs> Who doesn't have fingernails? And I'm just going to wow this back a little bit. I want a little arch in it. It helps that it doesn't stick until you put it down where you want it because uh, my mat is only an eighth of an inch bigger all the way around. And this is a piece of Simon Says Stamp Dull Pink. And so my cotton candy, my art piece, three and three quarters by five. And then my mat is three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. So there we go, we're ready with that. I'm going to take some Simon Says Foam Tape and attach a few pieces. Now I see some people who like to go all the way around the outside of their cards and that's cool. I find that this stuff is strong enough that putting one in each corner and one in the center uh, keeps my art piece exactly where I want it. Um, plus I'm also Scottish. <laughs> so I'm thrifty. Okay, so then again you just peel off the backing. Ugh. Sometimes easier said than done. I have my Nina card base. This is a uh, solar white 110 pound and it's four and a quarter by 11 scored and folded at five and a half. And I'm going to attach my art piece to the front of it. And just so you know, I have a link down underneath this video. You can head to my blog and you can download a free PDF for this card. I do this with a lot of my cards. I have a whole gallery there with all kinds of PDFs that you can download. Now I'm playing with Girls Best Friends. This is uh, Simon Says Sequins. And they have these lovely big honking white ones that I'm quite in love with. And I noticed a few other designers are too. Um, where am I going to put that one? I don't want to put it right on that flower. One up here. Over this way. Usually I use embellishments to hide boo-boos. <laughs> Just being honest. You can use glue dots for these big guys. So just pop one on the back and then add it to your card. 
Um, up here. I don't think, yeah, that one did glue okay. All right. And if you're really careful, actually, I'm not going to. I'm going to use a few of these little pink guys as well, but I'm going to use my Tombow for this. And I'm one of those people with warm hands, so it's really easy for me just to stick my finger in the sequins and pull one up to attach to my card. Otherwise, there's lots of cool little tools that you can get that will help you with that as well. So then I'm just going to take my tweezers and make sure that these are good and stuck. There we are. Okay, so here's all three cards up close and personal so that you can look at them. And uh, this is also called the embossed resist technique because uh, the embossing powder is plastic, so when you heat set it, it sticks to the card and the paint will not stick to the plastic. And that's the other reason why I rubbed off any excess paint, um, because it's sitting on top of that embossing powder. So kind of a cool technique, doesn't really take very long. And as you can see, you can dilute the watercolor ink to kind of any strength that you want. This one is very nice and muted, so this would make a nice sympathy card as well. And then this is kind of bright in your face. This one is somewhere in the middle. So I hope you enjoyed my share today and I hope you'll give it a try. All of the products that are in the uh, Fresh Blooms product release that just came out yesterday. I have listed underneath my post here and there's also a link to my blog where they're uh, shared there as well. And I will be back very soon because I have five more cards that I've made to share with you. So thanks so much for stopping in today and uh, give Simon Says a little love and order a couple products from them. Until next time, happy stamping. Thank you.